Hi, this is Edward Dawad, and welcome to this video on energy and the laws of thermodynamics. Let's start by reviewing the basic concepts of energy. So what is energy? Energy is the capacity of a certain system to do work. But this could be misleading since in some systems, energy is not available in the system. Let's illustrate this concept by looking at the two main classes of energy, potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy is the energy state of a system. It includes the energy available in electrons orbiting an atom nucleus. Electrons in the outer shell have the greatest potential energy. Potential energy is also found in chemical bonds. The second type of energy is known as kinetic energy, which is energy in motion or energy in action. An example is the movement of electrons or charged particles in an electric or ionic current. A good analogy of potential energy and kinetic energy is the flow of water in a river. Water movement represents kinetic energy and the accumulation of water behind a dam represents potential energy. From this analogy, we can see that potential energy can be converted to kinetic energy. By allowing water to flow from a dam, energy is converted from potential to kinetic energy. It's the kinetic energy here that does the work. The standard unit of energy is the joule. Energy occurs in many forms, including chemical energy, which is the energy that becomes available when chemical bonds are broken or formed. Another form of energy is electrical energy, which is, the, which is the kinetic energy of flowing electrons. And a third type of energy is mechanical energy, which is the energy associated with the movement or the position of an object, such as movement of muscles in a leg. All of the many forms of energy are convertible to other kinds of energy. Potential energy can be converted to kinetic energy and vice versa. And kinetic energy can be converted to electric or mechanical energy. In a closed system, energy transformations or conversions are subject to two universal laws known as the first and the second laws of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics is known as the law of conservation of energy. And it states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but can be converted from one form to another. The second law of thermodynamics states that the quantity of energy available to do work, which is known as the free energy, decreases, while unusable energy, which is known as entropy, increases over time. Therefore, energy conversions in a closed system are never used perfectly and efficiently. With every energy conversion, some of the available energy is converted to unusable energy. In biology, the free energy model used to explain energy transformations is known as Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy is the energy that can be converted into biological work at a constant temperature and pressure throughout the system. In mathematical form, Gibbs free energy is depicted in this equation, where G is free energy, H is enthalpy or total energy of a system. T is the absolute temperature of the system and S is the unusable energy, also known as entropy or disorder. Chemical reactions involve changes in the levels of free energy between the reactants and the products. These changes can be expressed in a mathematical form as delta G, which is the difference in free energy between the products and the reactants. Therefore, the equation that shows the difference in free energy following chemical conversions would become as such. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. A chemical reaction in which the level of free energy in the products is smaller than that of the reactants is known as exergonic reaction. Since there is transfer of energy from the system to the surroundings. Therefore, the difference in free energy between products and reactants in an exergonic reaction is negative. 
an example of exergonic reaction is the oxidation of glucose into CO2 and H2O. By contrast, a chemical reaction in which the level of free energy in the products is higher than that of the reactants is known as endergonic reaction since there is transfer of energy from the surrounding to the system. Therefore, the difference in free energy between products and reactants in an endergonic reaction is positive. An example of endergonic reaction is the formation of peptides from amino acids through the formation of peptide bonds. In biology, it is common to use calorie as the unit of energy in chemical transformations. Exergonic reactions are analogous to a ball rolling downhill. The ball rolls spontaneously, and at the top of the hill, the potential energy of the ball is higher than its energy at the bottom level. Whereas the opposite is true for endergonic reactions. The movement of the ball uphill is not spontaneous, and energy is required to push the ball uphill. At the top of the hill, the ball has more potential energy than the ball at the bottom. So let's consider again this reaction. The equilibrium constant of this reaction is known as K equilibrium and is expressed in this equation. The equation is a ratio of the concentrations of the products at equilibrium to the concentrations of the reactants at equilibrium. Changes in free energy in a chemical reaction such as this one is dependent on the K equilibrium of the reaction. At equilibrium, the net change in free energy therefore is expressed in the second equation, where R is a constant, and the unit of free energy becomes then joule per mole.